Hello everyone, my name is Andrei Lukyanenko and today I am going to talk about my Kaggle story. At first I will tell you about how I started Kaggle, my first steps, why I decided to start and how it went. Then I will share my thoughts about Kaggle, about great things about it and some things which I find frustrating to be honest. And at last I'll share some ideas about writing better kernels and uh, getting more votes of them. First of all, a small fun thing. What I get from Kaggle isn't only knowledge, skills and uh, maybe some recognizity, but also some cool things like t-shirts and this pixel book which I still use up to current time. Also, there is a package with Command Master hoodie, uh, but it's still in transit due to problems with COVID and logistics. So, at first, some notable dates. I have registered on Kaggle almost four years ago, yeah, it was quite a long time. I took part in a couple of competitions, but after that I left Kaggle for more than a year to focus more on improving the skills which more were more relevant for my job. Then in 2019 I was able to become a kernel grandmaster, it was an amazing achievement, but I continued writing kernels and in several months I was able to get the first place. This was quite interesting to me, I mean writing kernels and the achievement was totally amazing, I never expected to get this far when I started. So it was really cool and helped me in my job and my work and uh, in real life. Then, in a couple of months, I was able to get my first gold medal competitions and became competition master. And soon I became discussion grandmaster. I don't think it was a very serious achievement, but I'm still really glad I was able to get it. So let's start at the very beginning. At first I took part in Titanic competition, I suppose everyone who took part in Kaggle uh, tried Titanic, so I read the kernels which I published at that time, I wrote my own kernel, I did some EDA, I compared different models, I, I think I blended some of them and get that score which was well, not bad the time and I really really glad that I did it because I had some theoretical knowledge, I had some little experience but practice on Kaggle proved that many things which I knew were quite different so I learned a lot of interesting things. Next I took part in a small multi-class classification uh, competition called Goals, Goblins and Ghosts. It had only several features and it had uh, very little data, I think less than 1000 of rows. Yeah, I think it was one of so-called uh, Christmas competitions on Kaggle. So I wrote my kernel and I think it follows the structure of my current kernel. So I did some EDA, I generated some features, I made some models, I made model interpretation, I blended some models. So it was really cool, I got some interesting experience, but as I have already said, I have left Kaggle after this, because, well, let's see, Kaggle is great and good, but it didn't help me in getting my first job, because it didn't help me to get some skills which were more required to do real things like SQL, or maybe doing some real analytics and so on. So I spent some time improving my real world skills. Then I have found my first job and uh, I had to improve more skills related to my job. Also, I have went through several courses, I made some more pet projects, I learned better Python skills and so on, and it took a lot of time and uh, I decided to return to Kaggle only in the beginning of 2018 and uh, it was also about kernels. So there was this competition, Donors Choose Application Screening, it was about uh, creating good exploration about the data. So you write kernel, you get votes on it and uh, those who get the most votes get the rewards. 
Uh, I wrote some kernel. It was at the I spent a lot of time on it and did everything I could, but I think it was average compared to what I do now. So I asked a lot of people to vote for me, not directly, but shared my work on uh, LinkedIn, in Twitter, in ODSI and so on. And, say, and I think most of uh, competitioners also did it. And I was able to get the second place and won my Google Pixel book, which I still use. It's quite fun. And uh, that was my first serious experience and some success on Kaggle. After that, uh, I took part, of course, I wrote more kernels, I took part in competitions, but it's difficult, it's impossible to talk about all of them, so I'd like to talk uh, a little more about kernels. As you can see on the plot, I wrote my first gold kernel at the beginning of 2018. It was that kernel which won my pixel book. And it took me nearly a year to write 15 gold kernels and get the Grandmaster rank. After that, it took me several months to top one, as you can, and as you can see, I write uh, less kernels right now, but I think I'll still continue writing kernels on competitions which are interesting to me. Now, if we talk about competitions which were cool and uh, important for me, the first of them is Avito Demand uh, Prediction Challenge. Uh, this was uh, a first competition which I seriously took part. As we formed a team with some people who knew each other. We spent a lot of time and efforts of this competition. We trained gradient boosting models, neural nets. We tried to train our own embeddings, we tried to optimize our solution and did many other interesting things. And well, we got bronze medal and I think it was quite good at the time and I learned a lot of really important things, for example, even working as a team, because I think it's quite important to be able to do it, to be able to share the code, to be able to work in some general constraints and so on, and I recommend everyone such experience. Next one was Google Analytics competition, <laughs> and I think those who took part in it will remember it forever. It was a regression task, but a lot of targets were zeros, and many people thought that it would be better if this competition were a classification problem. There were also some leaks and competition was relaunched, there were some additional problems, and in the end, a lot of people, including me, submitted simply random predictions, and it was good enough to get a silver medal. This competition taught me that it is a good idea to not take part in the competition from the very beginning, to wait for some time, and to analyze whether it's worth investing time in this competition or not. Next two competitions were very different ones, but the thing which was similar is that I took part in a very big team. Uh, there was an idea in ODSI that it could be interesting to try to take part in the competition when it was near the end, so maybe two or three weeks until the end, form big teams and try to maybe crowdsource the solutions. So some people would work on one type of ideas and other on, on others. We did it, we tried it, and as you can see, we got silver medals and in home credit competition, we were really, really near the gold medal zone, but still weren't able to get it. It was really fun and interesting to work on such big team and try to manage it, but uh, well, after these competitions, Kaggle introduced the limitations on the maximum number of people in teams, and I think it's quite good because the bigger the team, the more chances that some people will work harder and some people will not work as hard as them. And the last competition about I'd like to talk about is uh, predicting molecular properties competition, of course, because this is the competition where I got my gold medal it was an amazing experience because uh, I was able to gather a very amazing team. We had a domain expert, we had grandmasters specialized in different areas of expertise. It was really cool working with them and I learned 
learned really a lot of interesting, important skills from this competition. Now I want to share some plots. Well, I like kerbals, so I like plots. First of all, I think it's quite amazing that uh, those who write kernels can reach the, such a huge audience. As you can see, some people have five or even more millions of total views on their kernels, and uh, I am near one million. And I have never expected that I'll be able to reach so many people, and I hope I'll be able to reach even more in the future. One additional interesting thing is that those who are interested in ranking know that uh, any points you get are decayed over time. So you could be top one in competitions at some point, but in a couple of years you will be quite low on the leaderboard because people get points and you don't. So it's really interesting that uh, someone has so many points uh, even though they don't have the first place. Uh, if you don't know, usually these people write, uh, Dan Beer here writes kernels, a lot of kernels for Kaggle Learn uh, educational competitions. Now, if we talk about gold medals, uh, it's interesting that even though a lot of people write lots of kernels, still there are no people with uh, more than 50 gold medals, but I suppose in future this will be exceeded because everyone, a lot of active grandmasters continue writing gold kernels. And just a small, maybe nice thing for me is that if we combine gold and uh, silver kernels, I'm at the top of such ranking. Now I want to move to my opinion about Kaggle. Kaggle has a lot of interesting bad and good sides and uh, while for some people uh, some advantages could be disadvantages and so on I want to share my own opinion about some aspects of Kaggle. Let's start with the core spirit of Kaggle, competitiveness. It's really cool because when you are working uh, at your job, when you get some data and build some model, usually you can't compare your results with other people because uh, it's quite rare to, for several people to build uh, separate models for one task. But in Kaggle, you can see how well your models work on the leaderboard and you can know whether you are good or not. But uh, the problem is that uh, a lot of grandmasters continue taking part in competitions and this is of course great because they share their knowledge and the hosts get the best solutions, but for new people it's quite difficult because it's very difficult to compete with grandmasters who have years of experience and continue taking part in competitions. Next point is kernel-only competitions. Uh, they were created as supposed to limit and stacking to help make the solutions more reproducible so that everyone runs kernels within the same environment and also within the same resources so people should be equal and I suppose these kernel only competitions were supposed to provide some smooth experience but sadly it wasn't uh, it isn't always this good because Often there are technical problems. Uh, they are solved over time, but people still uh, have difficulties with uh, submitting and uh, with getting some errors without descriptions. Another small problem is that uh, if you submit uh, from kernel, usually you have internet turned off. So if you want to use some interesting library, you have to use some wheel and install it in the kernel. Another possible problem is that people start using some hacks like probing, which isn't cool. There are some additional problems like uh, on the one hand the solution is reproducible, but on the other hand recently was the competition about weed detection and uh, the solutions were rerun once again after the end of competition. And if some people made changes to datasets and made them private, they uh, uh, submissions failed even though previously everything was okay. And of course, uh, hardware limitations are only for inference, so people with lots of GPUs can uh, train more models, can run more experiments and so on. 
next point is about gamification. Currently in our world, gamification is widespread in many areas and it could be both good or bad depending on the implementation and the people who use them. On Kaggle, a lot of great things happen thanks to gamification. People try to make better solutions to get high rank on the competition leaderboard. They try to create some cool and unique datasets. They try to write some high quality kernels to share their knowledge. They write posts on forums sharing the solutions, sharing the ideas and so on. On the other hand, of course, there are a lot of people who try to abuse this system. Some people try to cheat in competitions. Some people put some low quality datasets. Some people plagiarize kernels, fork kernels, make blends of blends of blends. And of course, some people simply post uh, memes on forums or post in some hot threads and easily get gold medals. The next point is about knowledge. Kaggle is indeed is a huge well of knowledge. Usually, if I am working on some new problem in real world, I is often start from Kaggle because Kaggle usually has uh, kernels with code for most of common problems. Well, there are a lot of exotic problems, but uh, many things like name identity recognition, some object detection, and really a lot of problems have examples of Kaggle which can be used uh, easily on your own data. So it's quite cool to have this source of information. Forums are provide even a lot of more information. On the other hand, it's sometimes it's difficult to find good uh, sources of knowledge because uh, there are hundreds and thousands of kernels of forums posts and it will be difficult to find the uh, high quality content among them. Next point is that Kaggle is all about you know, fast experiments if you are taking part in the competitions because, uh, well, it's a key, so you have to make a lot of experiments to get good results. People usually really use uh, a lot of state-of-the-art approaches, read the most uh, new papers and implement them or use the implementations. They try a lot of cool things and share them on forums. And in general, this is amazing environment for learning new things. But all of this comes usually at the expense of high uh, quality because uh, in those kernel competitions you usually have all the code in one kernel and in general when you iterate uh, frequently over new ideas you usually don't have time to write some good code and well in real world this could be a problem. Another point about this uh, state-of-the-art solutions is that not all of them are equal, I suppose. On the one hand, you could find some unique solutions like Transformers in the Science Bowl 2019 competition, but on the other hand, often high scores are generated by huge blends of models. I don't say this is bad, because this is also is a good approach which gets the results. Also, people who get uh, high score thanks to blends usually have single models which are strong and could get high results on their own, maybe even gold. But uh, a lot of people are demotivated when they have to fight for a minuscule increase of metric using some uh, simple, some switch, uh, these uh, tools. One more point is deep learning. Currently, there are more and more competitions on deep learning, on texts, on audio data, on images, and Kaggle kindly provides GPU and TPU quarter in each week. It's really cool and helps some people start the competition. On the other hand, uh, well, there are huge uh, datasets in some of competitions, as you can see. This competition had a set of almost one terabyte. Well, it's not all computers have such uh, hard drives. And, uh, well, if you work on such 
a big uh, competition, you usually have to use strong hardware and it limits the number of possible participants. Next is about tricks. In, uh, I could say that Kaggle taught me a lot of small things which I really use in my real world job. Uh, for example, adversarial validation. If you don't know what it is, it's a fact, a way to detect some kind of covariate shift. Basically, you take train and test data, put them on top of each other, and train a binary classification model on uh, to separate train and test. If this model has a high rock oak, well, it means that some features have uh, different distributions, and you should transform or maybe get rid of them. Another way, another thing, uh, interesting idea is some kind of nest validation. When you, for example, want to make a, a correct target encoding, it's a good idea to make a nested validation on faults. Another interesting idea is to use some complex architectures like transformers, uh, maybe interesting connections between layers and other things. And of course, there are a lot of interesting and unique processing which could be applied to some other areas. But sadly, there are a lot of tricks which work only on Kaggle or maybe work on some single competitions which aren't really cool. For example, multiplying by constant to change the distribution of predictions. In some competitions, uh, hosts don't provide user ID, so we have to reverse engineer it. It, it, uh, well, it isn't really interesting because it uh, breaks the purpose of the competition and you won't do these things in real world because, well, you usually have user IDs. Now, some things which are negative for me, it's first of all, of course, it's Kaggle life balance because if you're taking part in competitions or doing some activities, other activities uh, in your free time, usually you spend dozens and hundreds of hours on it and uh, it uh, usually harms your sleep or your life or some other things. Another point is about Kaggle uh, technical side because uh, recently Kaggle changed the layout and UI several times and not all people liked it. There are sometimes bugs with competitions and submissions. There are errors with the site, but Kaggle works on them, so it becomes better. And of course, there are sometimes problems with hosts. Sometimes hosts uh, give some questionable solutions or ideas. For example, banning some people or having some strange concept of license. Sometimes hosts don't answer the questions which people have or answer only after a long of time. And of course, sometimes there are leaks and competitions, there are problems with the data and so on. And it's really sad and frustrating when you want to provide the best solution. One additional point, I think I told about it, but I want to it, uh, once again say about it, is improving skills because uh, you really learn a lot of skills when you take part in competitions. And even if you don't get a high score on private leaderboard, you still get a lot of knowledge. You can read the solutions of the winners and use it next time to be, do better in the next competition. Also, Kaggle can help in the career. Some people say that Kaggle competitions cover only a little part of the things which people do in their real job. But let's think about it from the other point of view. If some companies are interested in people who do well on Kaggle, I suppose they will give some projects to these people in which Kaggle skills will play a big role. So you will be able to work in some company on really cool projects which are relevant to your experience. And there are more interesting things, some of which I talked about already, some maybe could be in some way contradicting, but I want to explain myself. First of all is reproducibility. 
uh, first, there are many ways to explain it. One of them is, uh, suppose you want to tune Kipper parameters. If each run of your model gives different results, you simply can't compare the runs, so you can't be sure that the improvement uh, of the score was due to randomness or due to change of your parameters. So you have to make sure that each run is reproducible, and if you change something, that it influences the result and not the random seed. Next thing is feature engineering. Some people say that uh, you get clean dataset in Kaggle and you simply train model on it. Well, it's far from truth because often you have some missing values in the data, some outliers, some dirty data and so on. Because this data was prepared by someone and this data usually was uh, from the real world if it isn't synthetic. So it has the same problems as the real world datasets. And uh, feature engineering is very important because training model is, uh, well, it's not very difficult. A lot of people can train the model, but creating the correct and working features are very important as, and usually this is the key to winning the competition. Also, there are a lot of small hacks which can be used uh, in the real world. I suppose I already talked of them, about them, so let's move forward. Experiment tracking. When you are running hundreds of experience within a competition, you simply have to find some reliable way of logging them. This could be something simple like a spreadsheet or something advanced like using experiment tracking tools like VNDB, CometML and other things. But uh, you have to do it anyway and it's quite useful in the real world. Next, as I said, uh, writing kernels and uh, simply be, uh, trying to take part in a new competition often requires you to be able to make some fast baseline on the things which you don't know. And this is often helpful in real world when you are starting a new project. And when you continue working on this project, it's very important to be able to iterate fast over ideas and to get to the results. Because the faster you iterate over the idea, the faster you can finish the project successfully. Now I want to talk about writing kernels. A lot of people ask me how to write good kernels, and uh, I have written some blog, some posts and forums. I even gave a talk about Kaggle storytelling, and I think I'll repeat some of these things and say something more. First of all, I think there are several ways of writing bad kernels. One of them is uh, when you train a model and provide some huge, huge logs which take most part of the kernel. It could be acceptable if your kernel has some super high score and uh, is placed high on the leaderboard, but usually this is quite a bad approach because it isn't really useful or good. Another bad example is uh, are some short kernels when you have only loading the data, maybe plotting one or two plots, no analysis, and uh, show simply no your real input. Another bad idea is when you plot uh, simple, very basic plots of low quality for each feature of the dataset without any analysis. And of course, there are some real bad practices like plagiarisms or blends of blends of kernels. Now, if these things are bad, what could be good? First of all, you can simply read the kernels of uh, top cugglers and see why they did what they did. Let me give you several examples of ideas of kernel. First of all, you could write some detailed tutorial about something, maybe a tutorial about some new library, some machine learning model, some approach for feature engineering, for feature selection and so on. But be sure to check that someone didn't do this before you. Of course, a lot of ideas were already covered in kernels, so try to find some new idea or to present the old idea in some new way. Or you can do what I can do is writing some exploratory data analysis of a dataset or competition. I'll talk about it uh, later. 
Also, if you can, it would be a good idea to write a high score kernel. Even if it isn't very cool, usually it will get a lot of likes and uh, respect from people. And of course, so some interesting kernels uh, finding mix, or providing some interesting approaches for the competitions are always welcome. So in general, provide your own analysis, create some unique content uh, and uh, share. Now, imagine you are some person who wants to start writing kernels. So let me give a brief overview of writing a Yidea kernel for the first time. At first, you need to write a description. What are you going to make your kernel about? Write that, for example, you want to explore the data or build a model or do feature engineering or something else. People should know what you're going to show them, because if you don't explain it, people will lose interest and, and close the page. Next, you can start exploring the data. As a basic approach, you could simply load the data, look at the shape, look at some basic statistics, some information like missing values, some outliers and so on. Plot some univariate plots for separate features. Next, you could move to exploring feature interactions and uh, the, trying to find some instances from there. Your analysis could start from simple descriptions like this is the distribution of a certain features, these are max or mean values of these features, and so on. Next, you'd better try to write your own analysis. For example, based on this plot, we should do some certain thing to our data. It's really good and interesting. Next, you could create some features and it would be a good idea to explain your motivation for creating them. When you are building the model, be sure to check everything is correct and it would be interesting to do something after building the model. For example, to find more the most important features to explore, to do some model interpretability, to explore the errors of the models, and so on. These are some basic ideas, and you can try them, and uh, after that, add some new flavor for your kernels. And at last, I want to talk about some ways of getting new votes. Of course, there are some shady ways, but I don't really recommend them. Better to avoid them and do something reasonable which people won't criticize. First of all, like I do, you could uh, start writing new kernels as soon as new competition starts. Usually, when I get a notification about a new competition, I stop doing everything which I can and start writing new kernel. Uh, if you want to write a kernel about some dataset, be sure to use some kind of known dataset, because if you write a kernel for a new dataset without any discussions, without any likes and so on, very little people will know about your work. Speaking about it, share your work. Maybe share it on social media, in, in some kind of channels and Slack and so on, where relevant people will see your work. Get feedback from people. You could simply read the comments for your work or maybe ask some people to provide feedback for your work. This is really extremely important to be able to improve. And uh, of course you have to improve. Try to write better kernels when you write new ones. Maybe you could start by improving the style of visualization. Or maybe you could change your analysis or do some other things. The most important thing is to continue improving. I hope this will help you to start writing better kernels. That's it for my talk. You can see my context here. Thanks for your attention and goodbye.